Thanks, Dan. Which button do we hit? What button do we hit? All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Monique. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, data governance, data literacy, and data models. And some people probably recall, if you want to learn something, then do a presentation on it. So this is a little bit of discovery for me, and uncharacteristically have some notes, because I want to make sure I make some points. Um, around this, but I think it's a good segue because what Graham showed was, you know, the realization of our ability to use data and that only works when you've got some level of governance and literacy around it. So I'm going to sort of go down the rabbit hole a little bit. You can imagine that any talk about data is like a spider web and you can touch on a whole bunch of things. So instead of me writing really complicated slides, I... Uh, let chat GPT write some complicated <laughs> slides. <laughs> this is actually a pretty good description of data governance. Um, but I look at it a little bit differently than the definition that's put out there because you, as you can imagine, this is just a parrot, you know, looking at what's out there and saying, I've distilled it down to a certain point. Um, I really look at governance like, are you sweating your data? All right, I saw some of the data that was shown in your slide, Graham, and I recognized that data because we sweat it, right? And it was part of building the Pods Golden Build. It wasn't just about building a data model. It was about testing that data model. Every table, every attribute, what goes in it? Um, you know, what is in that version and are we willing to post that to default, right? Uh, is it accessible and repeatable? Every one of those pipelines is its own little data model with its own features and its own information. Can you, know, you do the same thing for every pipeline that you have? Is the data unified between systems? You saw an example. Man, it was great. I loved your presentation. Thank you. It's perfect. <laughs> but you know, can you verify that when I click on this, I can see all the documents that describe the entire life of pipe? or I can see video that describes that. I was talking to Chad, he says, we're using satellite data that we get four times a year, right? So governance is not just a POTS data model looked at from a GIS person. How can I make that data accessible to my entire enterprise? And that means I have to sweat the details of every row, of every table, and every attribute. Is your data being generated, collected, stored, and distributed digitally? so that we can access it with computer systems, all right? And do you have a policy for governance, all right? We can talk about all the fancy definitions of data governance, but if you don't have a policy, and I'm not just talking, looking at the GIS folks, every system in your enterprise. So, and I forgot part of my introduction. I uh, work with a company, for a company, Terracon, 5,000 engineers doing services, geotechnical work, and this is the kind of presentation that you know, they purchased our company to be innovators within their company. And the first thing that became really apparent to me was, do you have a strategy for data governance? Are you collecting your data digitally? Is everybody in your organization sweating the data that you're collecting? And that's a 5,000 person company that's cranking out 75,000 projects a year, right? So this leads on to the second point, which is data literacy. Again. ChatGPT, but not a bad definition. <laughs> okay, I'm tired of writing this stuff from scratch. It was really easy. <laughs> but frankly, data literacy, who put your hand? Who's been exposed to a presentation on data literacy? Anyone? That would, I was expecting more. Okay. Um, data literacy is the language of data in your business. You just gave a whole presentation of that. We're showing our engineers all of the assets, conditions, locations, and events that happen on or along our pipeline, all right? Can people speak that data, all right? And this is not only the practitioners and the GIS people and the field people, it's from the boardroom on down, all right? Board, I'm, I'm lousy at presenting to CEOs, forget it. I'm just not, you know, because I will dive into the data model weeds in a heartbeat, right? 
But in order to apply a data governance policy, you have to have this semblance of data literacy where you sit and look at your company across the board. So Jeff, your four points of what you're talking about in the conference, your first one, geospatial data excellence, really falls into that theme. Everybody involved in the creation of data that the enterprise can use. Um, obviously, literacy doesn't work if there isn't data, and data doesn't work unless you have governance. You know, they feed onto each other. Um, but if everyone understands the importance of both, then you've got a culture shift around how you're managing your data, right? I would suspect that a fair number of us are the GIS people working on a pod's database and we feel somewhat isolated from the rest of the, the enterprise because they're all building systems that are specific to what they do. But I think that the idea of literacy across the board, understanding the data that you work with is the who, what, when, where, what, and how of your data. And it becomes the key of driving your business. I'm talking about an engineering company, but I think this is fairly analogous to a pipeline company, to a vendor's company. You collect data, you manage data, you store it digitally for the long term that you can use. So really the question is, is, you know, is your data culture the one on the left? <laughs> or is your data culture the one on the right? <laughs> All right, difference between firing a person out of a cannon is a one-off and you're not really sure how it's gonna work. Uh, bullet trains have tracks and schedules and stations and people know how to wor work them and they transport data super, super fast. And, you know, I actually should admit, all right, I was doing pods for the longest time thinking about, oh yeah, everyone's like totally committed to enterprise data management. I'm gonna be like completely admit that six months ago, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> Everything's about completing the project. I got my project done. I finished according to schedule and that's it and I'm done, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't build the value of data for the enterprise. Now this is me focusing a little bit on a message to Terracon because they have tons of or geotechnical data and how do they move it from project-based mentality to product-based mentality, from one-off to enterprise, right? And there's stages of this. I'm not saying if you don't do it from the enterprise way, you're wrong, right? But the idea is, is that you, if you do a project, make sure you're building the data for the bigger good. At least that's my opinion, right? But I think if you're gonna build value in your company from a data perspective, that's what you wanna do. So. You know, what's in it for you? This is the message that we're trying to give to the project to people. You know, it, if you have data available to you, the right data at the right time in the right context provided to you and the people who work for you, right? There's no more information silos. I thought, Graham, your BP presentation was awesome, right? Because it's showing, here's a whole bunch of systems and we're making this data available for our practitioners to use. They can do their job and they're not sweating. How do I get access to the data? You know, and kudos to the, your ability to build these systems with ESRI technology to just make it available to people. Um, if you have data that you could use, you know, you differentiate yourself from your competition. I'm not saying that data is always perfect and you can make decisions, but try making decisions without data, right? So having it and having it consistent time over time over time allows you to make decisions and better informed decisions. Um, if you build data that you've got from an enterprise perspective, and this is fairly relevant to Terracon, you know, we can take that data and package it and it becomes a revenue stream, right? And, you know, that creates value. And this message resonates with me because the company that we were purchased by is an employee-owned company. And, you know, they're you know, we can buy stock in our own company, it's a great thing, but that message of creating value that can be resold based on what the data you have is a very, very powerful one. So why is data important? Um, who does data best will win? Uh, this comes from uh, Accenture, Forrester, and the Harvard Business Review. Yes, Chad Holtman, are you here? Uh, he's out there, but he always teases me about my reading list for the summer, and that's part of it. Um, data that you have that you can use makes you more efficient. You can repeat your process. You have more certainty and less mistakes. 
you know where you're strong or weak geographically. You already know where your pipelines are, so that might not be um, generic, but for the folks providing services, you know where you are delivering data and where you aren't. You can make decisions faster based on data. Um, if you own enough of the data and it's of a specific type, you can set a standard or, as we've heard today, do the contributions to pods and say, here's how the, you know, this module should look because we're doing a lot of work there. Um, and then you could use data to, you know, dealing with problems using data. I sort of did the chat GPT thing tongue in cheek, but I sort of didn't because it proves the point. Right? It's a whole bunch of text written by a whole bunch of people and there's a system that's reading it that can say, I can make something out of this. Now, if it told me what to present, I probably wouldn't have included it. <laughs> and again, when you get data, and this is the cool part and I'm seeing this, it's gonna be, allow you to provide business opportunity and innovation. And I've got a bunch of statistics around that. It says um, for those three groups that did the, the work, 28% of the respondents didn't have a data strategy. 68% of the organizations say they fail to realize the value from their data, and data-driven organizations are growing at a rate of 30% per year. Um, I think that might be it, the oh, green button. You know, so I can't cl lay claim to that quote because uh, somebody I know who is a part of a pipeline company said, we're not just a pipeline company, we're a data company, right? The ability to handle and process and deliver data is part of what we do. And I thought that was a really interesting statement. Oop, so that's the uh, end of my presentation, but um, I wanna make a call out to somebody who gave me an additional uh, item on my reading list, uh, orbiting the giant hairball. I'm looking forward to reading that one. <laughs> Um, and I did prepare some notes on the reading list. So thanks for just listening a little bit about data governance, um, data literacy, and I think I mentioned data model once, right? They're important, but it's not the be all end all because I think the use of a data model is how you enforce the idea that we have governance around our data and we are enabling everybody in the enterprise, everybody to understand the data of what we do. They may not have to be an SQL guru. I mean, I wrote an email today that took a very complex SQL statement and said, here's our logic, and I wrote it on English. But they asked the question, how are we building this data? And every email I write around that is education for the idea of data literacy within your organization. And I will answer emails like that forever because they're interested, they want to know, and if they want to know and they're on a project, they're going to say, we need to make this data digital so that it goes into the enterprise system so that other people can consume it. And I think that that's the purpose, and very much the purpose, as all of us know, of what pods represent. So, thanks, Benny. <laughs> Okay, so real quick, and, and Graham, if you don't mind too, I know I didn't prep 